This Admiral Radio from 1956 or 57 was almost the first pocket size solar radio. We looked at this, the world's first solar radio, in another video on this channel. Had this 1956 radio been the wild success Admiral was hoping for, next up would have been a pocket-sized solar model. Admiral already had a model number series for it, the 6S. Admiral had already printed up the brochure for it, and we're looking at it. The 6 in the model number would have been for the 6 transistors, in keeping with Admiral's naming convention for their transistor radios. Now, even though pictures and descriptions were shown in this 1956 dealer literature, there is no evidence that even a single example of this smaller solar radio was ever made or sold. We see that it was slated to come in the same colors as the larger 7L series radios, and apparently for the solar power they were to use the same external sun power pack as the larger models. Now, as we learned in that other video, that solar pack was expensive. The larger 7L model had a list price of $60 for just the radio. Adding the Sun Power Pack option to make it solar would set you back an additional $185, more than triple the cost of the radio alone. If the pocket size 6S radio were to use the same Sun Power Pack, well, it would be one expensive little radio. Today we're taking a look at what came out of all that with an added transistor totaling seven, but without the solar option. Admiral introduced its 7M series, Admiral's first pocket-sized transistor radio, and a very attractive choice for the 1950s radio buyer. 20-foot listening test proves Admiral outperforms them all. When you shop for a pocket portable, make this simple comparison test. Take an Admiral 7 transistor and any other pocket portable. Step back 20 feet and compare their tone, clarity, volume. What a difference Admiral's extra power makes at this typical listening distance. If this ad were to appear today, it would have to have the caution warning, do not step back 20 feet near cliffs or in buildings with open windows. It goes on. Admiral's seven transistors replace tubes, can't wear out, burn out, or break. Distant stations come in clearer with power to spare for turn up the volume occasions or at intimate whisper volume. One set of inexpensive batteries gives a year's ordinary use. Wide color choice. Make the Admiral 20-foot test today. Hear the difference. I can't swear this case is actually leather, although it gives a pretty good impression of leather, and it has held up quite well, as leather would and not like those composite cases that are a blend of cardboard and who knows what, and are the organic equivalent of pot metal. The name Admiral is gold foil stamped on the flap. The radio's grill is painted black. The dial is underpainted to prevent wearing off of the numbers and the company's name appears raised in the gold aluminum trim panel on the front. In a deluxe touch, the Admiral name is then painted white. We see a quality construction inside and a chassis with seven black RCA transistors. The handle folds down under the radio for stowing it in your pocket 
It folds back a bit for using it as a stand, and it folds up for carrying. Admiral started out not as a company, but as a brand, a brand of the Continental Radio and Television Corporation, founded in 1934. Wait a minute. Radio and television? In 1934? Well, that's what my research shows, but I've got to wonder if they really had the word television in their corporate name in 1934. In this graphic from 1942, they do. But, well, that makes no sense either. They didn't even offer a television set until 1948. So they named themselves Continental Radio and Television 12 years before they offered a TV? Okay, seems kind of odd. But I guess in those days the word television had such magical connotations as the ultimate in high-tech that they couldn't help themselves. Over at Dumont, a real television pioneer, they took a different approach. Dumont began manufacturing TVs in 1938, and even though they were a pioneer, they didn't have television in their name, going instead by the name Dumont Laboratories. Anyway, setting aside the historical curiosity of Continental's name, they were making a complete line of radios and phonographs by 1940, including tabletop models, portables, and big consoles. But no TVs. Still, some of their radios did offer the television sound band, so you could hear television programming even if you couldn't see it. In another piece of twisted logic, Continental turned around in 1940 and dropped the word television from their corporate name, changing the name of the whole outfit to simply Admiral Corporation. Though they dropped the word television from the corporate name, they did, sure enough, get into the television business in a big way. By the mid-century mark, 1950, Admiral was one of the leading makers of televisions. By 1954, they were calling themselves the world's largest television manufacturer. Later in the 1950s, Admiral branched out into making refrigerators, freezers, air conditioners, and electric ranges. Admiral Pocket-Sized Deluxe Transistor Portable, world's first sun-powered pocket-sized radio with revolutionary sun power pack. Optional. Combination carrying handle and stand. Deluxe Golden Metal Grill Trim. Oh yes, golden metal. No space-wasting tubes to break, burn out, or replace. Uses six transistors. Easy-to-see full-size dial with convenient fingertip tuning. And plug-in jack for handy earphone attachment. So... Are you watching this video on an Admiral TV, or an Admiral smartphone, or an Admiral tablet? No, you are not. For why you are not, see my video titled, What Killed Consumer Electronics in America? That video is about Magnavox, primarily, but Admiral's demise is strikingly similar.